Hey y'all, what's up? Big Willie here, and welcome back to episode 35 of our FTB Skies Expert Let's Play. Behind me you can see I've done some off-camera work. I have put all of the ingots that we're getting from our auto smelting into compacting drawers, which were trimmed and whatnot. We put our redstone in over there too so that we have blocks available uh, without having to craft them. And uh, yeah, just shuffled a few things around. Some of that stuff was over here. But got that done in between episodes, hanging out in Discord, and I filled the Don't Get Distracted Wooly Chest. So, without further ado, let's see what's in it. All right, so in the Don't Get Distracted Wooly Chest, there's a bunch of random stuff. First and foremost, uh, some of the off-camera work I did revolved around utilizing the logistical sorter for mechanism. So let's go up here and I can give you like a brief demonstration of this. So if we shift click it onto a lectern facing it, you want the fat side on the storage that it's supposed to pull from and the skinny side where it's supposed to spit it out. If we take and we split this up in a T like that and we put a couple of drawers on either side, what we can do is actually pretty cool we can tell this logistical sorter to pull things out of our storage and then we're going to be able to tell it which side to send it to and what to send to that side. So if you shift right click not on the section by the drawer but like on the knuckle you'll notice it changes the color. So these colors are important so we can use these colors to dictate where the sorter is going to send items that it pulls out of our storage. So let's just grab an example here. Let's grab some sulfur and some gunpowder, right? So this is just for demonstration purposes, but let's say we wanna send sulfur over there and gunpowder over here, right? So this one is, you can just right click it with your configurator to get the color, that one is green. So if we go in here and we go to new filter, item stack, sulfur, and then you just click in this box till you get your color green and you hit save, it's going to send them only to the green side and it gets even cooler. So now I can tell it item stack gunpowder and we want you to go to cyan, right? Cause that's where we, that's the color we set on the other side, right? And now if we watch, it's gonna send those and only those, notice it quit sending the sulfur cause this drawer is full. And now it's gonna send those to that side. So. These are gonna allow us to automate all sorts of stuff. <laughs> the keen among you may have noticed that there is one right here. So that one is actually sending salt, or, or not salt, sugar and seeds down to two different locations down there to keep our setup for biodiesel fully stocked and I no longer have to manually add seeds. But Wooly didn't stop there. I did a bunch of this stuff around the base in various places. I put some out here on our mob farm to help solve our buildup of gear and stuff in here. So if you'll notice, we've got dark red and green. The green items are stuff that I wanna keep in my storage and then every time I check it and there's like another random piece of armor or whatever, I can add the random pieces in here and then this is a neat setting too. So if you have a piece of armor, if you turn fuzzy mode on, it will ignore NBT data. So as long as it's a leather helmet, even if it's only got one durability or if it's enchanted, it's gonna send it along anyways. And that allows us the freedom to trash the stuff we don't want. There we go, look, some gold pants. Buy gold pants. And then the stuff we do want is going right into our ender chest and being sucked into our storage over there. So this was a huge, huge progress here. I had never worked with these logistical sorters, or if I had, it had been a really long time. So it was took me a minute to figure it out, but once I got these figured out, I kind of went to town. All right, next up in the don't get distracted woolly chest, there is a good bit of stuff in here, and we're gonna just grab it all. We got a couple of disillusion chambers. We've got a bunch of random crafting ingredients, and that is because we need to get going on some more progression, dang it. Um, we need to make our fluid laser base, which requires advanced machine frames, which requires pink slime, which we made the pink slime a few episodes ago and have a stockpile of it. I do need to show you guys that. So these, this grass 
I got over in the Discord and asked, this grass is meant to decay over time and turn into regular grass uh, because they don't want you to just set this up and forget about it. They want you to do this, I guess, a more creative way. Um, but it's still working for the purposes I need, and I've got a full thing of pink slime. But as you can see, some of the grass is already gone. So I had to take the vector plates off. They would not spawn through the vector plates for me. Uh, I just had to take them off and then, you know, uh, let it sit here and kill a bunch of them, and it filled up the pink slime no problem. So we've got plenty of pink slime for making advanced machine frames and a way to get more. Now we need to make up some of those machine frames. So advanced machine frames start with simple machine frames, which are two latex, a machine frame duraplast, uh, steel and gold with latex in the middle. And I do believe we made some of these before. So give me a minute to uh, get this stuff in here. I can't obviously shift click into that. That was dumb, Wooly. So we need two of these, two of those, two of those, one of these, and what was the other? A latex Duraplast, two of these, which is why we automated these, <laughs> those Duraplast sheets. So that's gonna let us make a simple machine frame. We're gonna need to make a bunch of these. Um, this is a case where we could use like an ordered sorter from Elemental Craft, and you just put in, like if you need two of something, you put in two, and it'll put them all in an order, and we could feed this, you know, to have this automatically being crafted. Uh, I don't necessarily know that we need to go that far right now, but if I get there, I will show you that when I set it up. So let's do another set here. Bam, 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 and bam. Probably make up four or five of these, so give me a moment. All right, y'all, so I ended up going ahead and making us a ordered sorter. I think it's just gonna be a little bit better way to go ahead and get us set up with this. And uh, yeah, so let's uh, let's do it. We're gonna put the barrel right on top of our petal apothecary because I didn't plan this out. Put our ordered sorter pointed in the way we want, and then we're gonna tell it one, two, one, two, one, two, one, one. And so now you see all of our ingredients right there. It's gonna pull all of those out of this chest for us one at a time and put them into here. We need to tell this to accept input from the left and then we need to disable inputs for this one from any other slot. We've already made three, so I wanna make three more. So we'll toss in, let's see, uh, that many, that many, that many, those, and that. And we'll be limited by the amount of those. So now, as you can see, it put in the right amounts all in order, and that's gonna automatically continue to craft. So in, we could set this up somewhere and, you know, tell it to export the items to this barrel, and then it would put them in here, and then we could pull these back in later on. We'll be able to do more, like, you know, quantity-based automation once we get to A2, but for right now, if we need a bunch of these, we can just come over here and stick a bunch of the ingredients in here and it will stop when it runs out of one. So like if it runs out of, let's say steel, for example, first, or in this case right here, it'll be easy to see. It just used our last machine frame. So now that it doesn't have a machine frame, what it'll do rather than just feed in excess ingredients from the next round, this thing knows that it still needs to feed a machine frame. So if you watch, right there, it's gonna stop and it's not gonna feed anymore until there's another machine frame in here. So you can always like limit how many you make by putting in only the number of machine frames or whatever that you need and it'll just keep making them. Now, let's actually, I didn't think this through. Let's go ahead and just put in five more and you'll see that it's gonna pick up and finish that machine frame. Now it's waiting on it to craft and it'll do it over. So let's let that roll. We now need to use our pink slime. So I did not make an extra fluid transfer node. So we're gonna get lazy and <laughs> stick it right over here. No joke. So we're gonna put a dissolution chamber right here. Uh, we're gonna tell it that you can take your fluid input from the top pull and it will pull that in. Very nice. 
We're gonna grab out a GPS data card from our backpack. And we're gonna get its location and go get it some power. Where did I put my sword? Did I stick it in storage or something? Well, uh, that's a problem when you don't know where your sword is. Friendship is what it's called. Teleportation, yay. Okay, that means my pickaxe is in here too. Man, why didn't y'all tell me I put my stuff in storage? Okay, so for the next one, uh, we needed power. That's why we got distracted. And you should have empty slots. Send some power out. Let's check this and see if there's any more items that need added to the filter. Yep, carrots have not been added to the filter yet. So we just come in here, new filter, item stack, carrot, and it is green for good to go. Then we can put the carrot back in and it'll send it right over here to the inner chest. Nice. We need another storage. Uh, we'll grab out a chest and you should have power now. Yep. Ordered sorter. Now for the advanced, it is diamond gear, two latex, two netherite, two gold, a diamond gear, and one of these. So two latex, two gold, two netherite, a diamond gear, and one of those. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, one. And there we have it. <laughs> Look at that. Ain't it a pretty thing? Wait for it. We can definitely put speed upgrades in these to speed them up, especially once we get to automating stuff later. But that ordered sorter, so key for automating stuff, just like this, where we don't necessarily even need these in the right order, but we need them in the right quantities and only in the right quantities put in for the craft to go off. So rather than having to like manually just put two in each time, it's a great earlier game solution. I mean, it's not that early. You have to get to the swift alloy ingots to make them. You could in theory probably rush elemental craft way earlier in the pack than where we got into this to use these if you wanted to. Um, it's not necessarily useful until you start getting to stuff like the dissolution chamber where you have specific orders that things need to go in. And there may be a way to do this with pedestals. I am just not that familiar with that mod. Um, so, all right, we're gonna grab out these here. Sweet, advanced machine frames and that lock to unlock the quest achievement for the mob imprisonment tool we made. Now we've got some simples and some advanced. So do, let's see, hold on. For the fluid laser base and then we need the drill. No, laser drill, right? You need a bunch of them. So we need like four of those. Those take the basic machine frames, the simples. Okay, so yeah, we should be good. What are we missing out of here? I'm gonna toss in, I'm gonna keep those because we might need machine frames for other things and I don't wanna have to make a bunch more later. So let's see, have you used all of the other ones we put in here? Yep, you did. Okay. So as you can see, it's just waiting for me to put another simple machine frame in there and it'll craft up the next one, same as the other one. So there we have it. We can make our advanced machine frames. Now the next tier of these, there's a reason I have another dissolution chamber. There's one more tier that requires wither gas. I don't know that we're gonna get to wither gas in today's episode, but uh, or ether gas, not wither gas, it comes from a wither, it's called ether gas. Um, but you need to make a stasis chamber and a fluid laser drill, the thing we're getting ready to make to get oil in space. You need to make that in order to be able to extract ether gas from a wither that you summon and keep in a stasis field. So that's probably for another episode in the next couple days because it is part of our next progression, but we are not going to make that right now. So for right now, we already made that mechanical squeezer, so let's get it out of our pinned stuff. We are on to the fluid laser drill. Needs a diamond pickaxe, not a problem. And then it needs some diamond gears. We left those diamond gears in this thing. Let's go grab them. Give me my diamond gears back. There is a fluid laser base. That is the center of the fluid laser base. And then now to go around it and speed it up, we need drill, the laser drills. We're gonna need, hopefully we can make like four of these. Two, three, are we out of latex? Yes, we are. Should have some in here. I hate it. I hate this storage system for that. It doesn't know what it has in its uh, crafting grid. There we go. Four laser bases. You can see it gave us a quest credit for that too. 
So we're working through this industrial foregoing quest line there with our advanced machine frames, laser bases. It's going to give us, ooh, we can pick a lens. Can I get the black laser lens? That's the one I need for the space stuff. Heck yeah. Freebie, I like it. All right, so that gets our fluid laser base. And then next in this quest line here to get us to power is going to be the refinery controller, which I have on the list of things to do today. It's just a thermonomatic processing plant with some other stuff. Uh, but let's go check our chest. What was that? I had set up some ender chests that I was going to use to move items. What items was I going to move with an ender chest, Wooly? This was in here for a reason. It was in the don't get distracted Wooly chest, and now I don't remember what it's for. No! Please hold. Okay, I think I remembered what those are for because the goal is to get oil coming from space. That's what we were doing all of this for, was to get our fluid laser so that we can set up our refinery controller in space to get our kerosene, to get our energizing orbs, so that we can make the ender cores and we can get flux networks up and running, hopefully. We'll see. I have gotten long-winded on the front end of this, and thanks for listening. Sorry I ramble. Uh, here we go. So we need to make some stuff for space. In order to be able to breathe and have fluid water in space, we are going to need to pressurize our space station with an oxygen distributor. So the oxygen distributor is right here and we have exactly nothing we need, but we need three of these fans, which means we need more iron rods. So let's grab out some iron, go make some iron rods real quick. Uh, we need our rod mold, okay, rod mold. There we go. Half a stack's enough. There we go. And we need how many more of these? Two more? One, two. Okay, there's our three for our oxygen distributor. Now we need tanks. One, two. And then we need an oxygen gear. One. And then we need this. Oh my gosh, we need a lot of dash plates and a couple of the, this thing here. One, two. Pressurized tube is fine. Make some. Okay, there's that. Getting closer. All we need is dash plates. Okay, so dash. Um, we have a ton of dash dust. How does it get uh, smelted? Arc furnace. Arc furnace. Okay, let's go get it going in the arc furnace. Just let it do its thing, and we will go smash up the dash we do have into plates along with all this signalum. Let's not make it into rods, though. That would be bad. Don't don't turn all your stuff accidentally into rods because you forget to take your mold out. Send the dash first. Not my food. Okay. And that gets us 32 more of those rods. Dash plates. Oh, that's right. Dash plates are freaking blocks, aren't they? Oh my gosh. That is an absurd amount of dash that we're gonna need. Yeah, this isn't even enough for the first piece. I mean, we have enough, we're just gonna have to wait on that arc furnace. So we will do that. So be right back. All right, while we're waiting on our dash to smelt, I wanted to show you this. Uh, this is Moonstone from the moon. And if we place it down here around our pure white daisies or pure daisies or whatever they are, they are white. I don't know why I keep adding that, but if we add them down, you'll notice a particle effect. This is going to turn this into the stone from AE2, the sky stone. So this is how we get the sky stone we need for stuff that is AE2 recipes. So we're going to let this convert here while we're waiting on the other. And as you can see by my inventory, I'm doing the usual woolly thing. I'm just piddling around the base, working on all the little tasks that aren't necessarily automated yet, but should be, and uh, trying to keep things running. I do look forward to automating a bunch of this uh, because we're there. We can automate a lot of this stuff super easy now, like the enriched peat. I should be able to come up with a process to fully automate the creation of that, feed it into the peat farm, have that peat fed into a furnace, have that furnace peat fed in over there, biomass and this and here get all that set up so that it it makes it indefinitely for us but i talked long enough here's our sky stone this is going to be your method for it you can use block placers and breakers uh, of any kind really to automate this if you wanted to and 
you know, if you're automating it, you don't necessarily need more than a couple long run. I mean, early on, you're, you know, it's going to feel too slow. But then after you haven't needed any for a while, if you've just got one little spot set up that's placing and, you know, breaking, it adds up way more than you would think over time. And yeah. Oh, by the way, the moon, if you don't have silk touch, it turns into cobble. Just smelt it to get the regular moonstone. Co moon cobblestone will not convert. And then here we have enough enriched peat to fill back up all of our peat generators that are running this front setup. Um, we should automate all of this and then add this in as supplemental power. Uh, we're going to get to the induction cells from uh, Mechanism soon, and those induction cells will allow us to store large quantities of power. So having like a fully automated setup with six, eight, ten of these peat generators may not seem like a lot of RF per tick, but if they're just running in the background to fill a battery, you'd be surprised how much time you spend in your world where you're not fully utilizing your power and your storage may be full. So when you get into those induction cells and those big battery buffers, those help out with, you know, things when you get into new, new stuff and, uh, you need a lot of power to keep it going. Like we could really use a cell over here behind the uh, arc furnace because it just uses so much power, so much. I did even move it to being on mechanism cables. I wonder, does it get better if I put a cable to each of these? Nope, does not get any better. <laughs> As you can see, all that time for two more blocks of dash, and those blocks become one block as a plate. We're gonna, yeah, it's gonna take us a minute. <laughs> okay, y'all, so I may have uh, gone down a rabbit hole, and I also just somehow turned on these numbers. There we go, control I, apparently it turns on all those yellow numbers. I went down a rabbit hole because I had to wait on Desh to smelt. So I did a bunch of stuff. I am in the process of making up another w magnets worth of the layered magnets. We need some more electrum. That's smelting. I went on another adventure. I got another blaze burner because I needed that for the, for the destabilized redstone to make this stuff. I did a whole bunch of crap because I was waiting on Desh. But we now should have enough dash for all of the things I originally wanted to get done today. So let's come here and make our oxygen loader. And then we're going to make our oxygen distributor for the space station itself. Oh, you sorry, mother trucker. Put all of it into the storage. Then hit the button. Why are you not pulling those tanks? They're in here. Now we need a water pump. And then we need another aqueous accumulator. Then we're gonna need two buckets of water and some leaves to put the water in. A couple of those. Okay, so that should get us oxygen loader, uh, all that. Did we make our refinery controller? No, we didn't. Refinery controller. We need two more dash plates and a thermopneumatic processing plant, which there should be one right there. Ooh, this one has, this one still has the volatile redstone in it. Well, this is a problem, you see, because, all right, we'll figure it out when we get up there. Let's, oh, it's gonna use the, we gotta empty it, dang it. Okay, so destabilized redstone or volatile, volatile. All right, there is 250 little millibuckets left in there which means that to get it out, I need to take one bucket worth and then I can pick it up with this. All right, so we cleared out that machine. I don't know how much of that stayed in the edit, but uh, yeah, the having to make Desh threw me off today. There we go, mm -hmm. refinery controller. We have that. Now the only other thing we need, let's mark you off, you off, you off, you off. We're done with you and you and you, yeah. We need a fluid laser base, which we already made, right? So let's grab all that stuff. Let's put our space suit on, put some of this junk in our inventory away, and uh, let's go to space. All right, so I remembered why I had these ender chests. It is so that I can import the stuff we're growing in our phytogenic insulators into our storage system. So we're gonna actually just use one as a temp block so that we can set the colors on both. Both of them are going to get uh, green, 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 if I can get a good angle on this one. Well, let's just do the top one, and then I'll do the second one off camera. 
there, there, and there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pull items out of the top of these phytogenic insulators. So for now, we'll just put one basic transporter here. We're going to tell you that you can output to the top, auto output enabled, and that's going to send them into the green, green, green channel. Then I'm going to take the green, green, green channel, and I am going to set it up as an import into our system. And that is going to get us all of the byproducts of any phytogenic insulators we set up and grow. So as you can see, this one's going to be growing us some mangrove logs because I really want uh, to have a surplus of wood in our storage system. I'm tired of having to like go and chop trees down by hand. I should have done this a long time ago. So there we go. And we're going to set this to pull because it will pull faster than that machine will eject because it only ejects so many per cycle, but the pull will pull them into here. I'll go get drawers set up for these logs, saplings and roots, and that'll be our infinite supply of logs plus whatever else we grow. All right, space suit on to the space station we go. All right, so the first thing we're gonna need to do is we need to close off all the doors that lead to the launch area here. Uh, let's do that from inside first. So we will close you and you. Each of these is a double airlock, so that way if you're going out here to where your ship would be, you don't lose all of your pressure, is the way I understand it. So let's go around now and close these inside ones. We're gonna get all of these closed and then somewhere in one of these areas, we can then set up our oxygen thingy to pressurize our space station. So it will take it a while to pressurize the whole thing, but let's put it in here, I guess. So we're gonna need this and this and these and this. Okay, so if we do this and the leaves, I can't place the leaves. Did y'all see that? They like disintegrated. Is it because we need oxygen in the atmosphere first? Uh, hmm, this could get complicated. I thought I understood the task. Water pump, you need power, and then you need to be on top of it, it says. So these will both need power. Question is, can I send them power from downstairs? Uh, in our bag, we should have our get home. Alrighty. Let's go charge this up real quick so we can get back home. This is why Flux Networks will be so great because <laughs> it will charge it for us automatically on our person. And then let's see if we can send power to space. I don't know. I didn't see it move. So let's go back to space and find out. Do these machines have the power? Nope. So we cannot send power interdimensionally, it looks like with Ad Astra, or not with that, with uh, Cyclic. Okay, so we're gonna need some peat generators. So let me go grab those. All right, grabbed a couple peat generators, tossed in some enriched peat that we were making off camera. Now I gotta figure out how to get water into this water pump. So can I just mechanical pipe you into here? Well, it looks, it shows the image that it's connecting, but it's not taking the water. I wanna say this water pump said it needed to be above an infinite source, which is, I don't know how I'd do it. It's like, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Dang it. Can I add water straight to you? Oh, I can. Okay. All right, all right. So let's uh, just, yeah, let's pipe that water into there. Do I have to do this while there's still oxygen in the air? And I, can, I didn't bring enough water. I need more water. No, 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 turn around. Okay, so the aqueous accumulator goes here. Stair on each side. And I take my, nope, killing me. So I don't have oxygen in the air. Well, how much water does this thing take? All right, take two. We're gonna see if we can place our water sources while this oxygen thing is oxygenating because I've never done this. So I don't know how this works. All right, so now I should be able to place these buckets of water to get an infinite source. We need something to block the flow. So the water pump is not pumping. Extracts water from a source and distributes it to nearby machines. Okay, so I didn't need this water pump at all, I guess. 
because if this thing is pumping, that constantly has water, which is constantly providing oxygen. So does it still work if I open these? Yeah. It doesn't quite reach the other side of the space station. So it looks like we're gonna need two of these or we gotta move that thing more centralized maybe. All right, can I take my helmet off now? I can. Look at that. We got air in space. All right, we can turn these bubbles off because that's annoying. Um, Hide. Cool. It's using 120 to 125 RF a tick. Does that mean these are not gonna be able to keep up? Nope, they're gaining. Cool, all right. Well, there we have it. So that is what it took. It took a couple of stairs waterlogged with the aqueous accumulator in the middle, a basic mechanical pipe pumping into our oxygen maker and some peat generators to kickstart us and pressurize our space station. Now it does look like it's not reaching the whole way. So if we go around to this edge over here, we're probably gonna start taking damage right around here. Yep. And then if we get back into our air bubbles, we'll quit freezing. So I may need to move this in between episodes to make it better positioned for all of our stuff. But that gets us through just about everything. I ran out of time. We're not going to have enough time to set up the fluid laser drill and the refinery controller. So look for that in tomorrow's episode. We will get that set up. I will probably end up moving this to another spot in the space station to see if we can have just one setup pressurize the whole thing for us. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in tomorrow's episode. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.